Welcome to Inside View. I'm your host, Joel Metzger, and joining me on this show is Cliff Edson, who is the District 1 County Supervisor. Cliff, welcome. Hey, thank you, Joel. Good to have you on the show. This is, I believe, the first time we've chatted uh, after you've been elected, won the election. So let me congratulate you. Thank you. And I uh, know that was a, a exciting campaign there for a while, and uh, you came out on top. So you've been in office for more than a year, and I'd love to know how things are going for you. Well, uh, it's been a learning curve, I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a cram course on uh, government and, uh, and, uh, and the communities. So it's, uh, it's been going good. I, I'm enjoying it. You, uh, you are a business owner. Uh, you own a restaurant, Country Cliffs in San Andreas, so you have that background and you care for the community. That was what came through through the campaign, one of the things I noticed. Um, but being a supervisor, as you said, I mean, there are a lot of things that just most people just don't know, unless you're some kind of a government junkie and you go to all the meetings and, and get that. So um, try to explain that to, let's say, the average person who has no idea. What, it, what are the responsibilities as a supervisor? Well, we get to uh, make policies for the county. And uh, um, and basically uh, 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 work hard to, to to try to improve uh, what we have going on in the county here. So uh, you know, citizens get to weigh in on that. That's that's how we operate. Uh, what our what our constituents uh, are asking us to do. That's what we do. Um, and and then uh, we're managing the resources in the county, such as the sheriff's department the uh, uh, Public Works Department and, and uh, planning and, and all of those departments uh, that are in, in the county, and there's a bunch of them. Uh, so don't ask me to tell you all of them because <laughs> it would be impossible for me to do that. So you guys pretty much are overseeing just about everything that goes on in, in the county level to some extent, and you kind of have the final say in a lot of things. In a given meeting, and I forget, how many meetings do you have a month? Is it twice a month? Or? Twice a month, yeah. Okay, and that's on Tuesdays? Right. From about 9 until anywhere from noon to... Yeah, so, so if we have closed session items, then uh, we start at 8. And like yesterday's meeting was from 8 until around 6.30 p.m. So that's, that's a, a full work day for you, yeah, more than a full work day. It's a lot of sitting. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> for sure. And then uh, to prepare for a meeting like this... How thick is a, the binder that you're looking at? I mean, what's the board packet look like? Well, you know, it, it depends on what the, uh, uh, our uh, CAO sets up for an agenda. And or, who's the CAO? Uh, Lori Norton is our CAO. And what, what is her role in the county? She manages the uh, government center and uh, uh, the uh, department heads and all of the employees. Okay, so she pretty much is doing a lot of work in order to prepare things that you guys will consider and then vote on. Yes. Kind of a, your behind the scenes person? Yes. Okay, so anyway, um, so she prepares the board packet for you? Uh, well, uh, actually, our board clerk does that, but there's a, uh, you know, her, uh, uh, Diane, uh, and uh, Lori, and then uh, the, the, uh, um, our chairperson uh, sits together uh, before the meetings and they decide, you know, how the meetings are going to go. Okay. So they manage the time and they manage. Uh, what can go in, you know, uh, what the content is uh, so that we can have good fluent meetings. How, how does like a community resident who has an issue or a concern, how would that person go about getting something on the board agenda? They could call uh, the, the board of uh, supervisors clerk and, um, and that would probably go to CAO and then the CAO would talk with the board chair and decide if it uh, if it's something that they could do. Okay, and then is, are the agendas usually so full that it's really tough to get something on? So yeah, you have to look months out. Or? We're working about uh, three weeks out or three meetings out right now. Three, okay, so you guys definitely have a lot of stuff already planned. Mm -hmm. um, okay, um, so as a, a newer board member, do you think that? it takes longer for you to prepare because you just simply don't have the 5, 10, or in Tryon's case, 35 years of experience to kind of know the ropes, or are you pretty much there? I'm pretty sure that I have to put in a little bit more effort than, uh, than uh, Supervisor Tryon did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you know, that's okay. I, I uh, usually uh, get the board packet about four days ahead of time so that I uh, can uh, sit around and, and study it and then chew it up a little bit and, you know. 
uh, and, and, and know as much about it as I can. It also gives me time to call uh, if there's a, a department head or somebody have to call during the in the county to ask a question, it allows me time to do that. Okay, so when, when we talked last, like I said, you, you hadn't been elected. Now that you have been in government, how is it different than you expected it to be? Uh, I would say it's, uh, uh, it's not much different than I expected. Uh, uh, it's uh, maybe a little bit more limiting so, uh, you know, you think that you can get in there and move stuff really fast or get something done. Like in my personal business, if I want to do something, I get it done. Uh, in government, it takes a little longer. And I think that's be by design because uh, uh, if, if it weren't like that, every four years when you get a new elected official, you would probably, the, the communities would be living on a roller coaster ride. So uh, I don't, I'm not necessarily, uh, I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing. In, in some sense, really examining everything and making sure that the, the process goes properly can be a good thing, and then everyone's hopefully satisfied with the result of that decision. Correct. And, and you, you know, you, you, you got to have good staff to do that, and, mm. and we do. So um, in the last year, what are a couple things that you're really proud of that you've been involved in? Uh, well, actually, I'm keeping a, a list on my, my brain, my cell phone. <laughs> uh, one of the things that I uh, recognized right off the bat was uh, the cement plant uh, was, is, a, is a beautiful piece of property. It's industrial, and of course nobody looks at it because the silos were there, which means uh, you know, there's going to uh, have to be some kind of reclamation. That's money. So I um, uh, got together with Environmental Health. I mean, and uh, um, uh, Brian Moss's group, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, we contacted them, and they were going to do some testing on it. And in the meantime, I found a YouTube video of some kid standing on top of those towers, and so. And these uh, are big towers. Scary, man! I wouldn't be up there. And so uh, uh, I sent it in to Brian. I said, "Hey, Brian, uh, show, show them this and see what they think about that." And then about two weeks later, they said, "Hey, we're tearing them down." So, and for those who don't know, where are these towers in, in, in uh, Calaveras County? If you go out, uh, uh, come up San Andreas and go out to Pool Station Road, it's about uh, maybe f three, four miles out. And uh, there's 1,500 acres of property owned by a Lehigh uh, um, Corporation. And, uh, and they're doing the right thing. You know, the, they've been uh, completely uh, cooperative. So. Okay. And, and so what that'll make, it, uh, once, once the towers are down, and uh, the property is deemed environmentally uh, good by the county, then I think it'll make it a more attractive piece of property, and maybe we can get some uh, people interested in that. And, and on the, the goal is to, to uh, have somebody come and open a business there. All right. So there's one thing. What's another thing that, that stands out to you? Um, um, I have been working um, with uh, Calaveras Unified School District and, uh, and Delta College to try to get uh, Delta College to at least put classes here for now. And I got to tell you, my ultimate goal is to get a campus here. Um, so uh, what I'd like to do is show them that this is the place that it needs to be. So we can, if we can get some classes here and we can fill them up and, uh, you know, and, and get that higher education here in the county Keep uh, give our, our our young students a break so they don't have to drive down to Stockton or move to Stockton. They could actually take some of their general ed classes here. Then uh, I want to prove to them that we can do that, and and so that so that they could maybe consider uh, putting that campus here. And by a campus, this is would be kind of like a satellite campus. Yeah, it would be a satellite, and probably not that big to start with, but really something's better than nothing in this case. Correct. Remind the viewers who may not know what promises Delta made to this county in terms of um, the bond measure that was passed where we're paying out money to Delta. Um, what did they promise us? They, they promised uh, when they were uh, you know, coming in and trying to get our support for that bond measure, they promised us a, a, a satellite campus. In, in Calaveras County. In Calaveras County on uh, just outside of uh, uh, Valley Springs towards Paloma. And uh, there was uh, Tom Coe's property, and I think a lot of people know what, where Tom Coe's property is out there. Uh, Tom Coe uh, offered up some free property if they would just come and build the campus there. 
and so the, you know there was discussion around that, and uh, um, and so we're we're starting to to look more into that now. I know that working with someone like Delta, you know, they're kind of a pretty big school, and we're a small Calaveras County. Mm -hmm. Realistically, what are the chances of convincing them to actually come up here and build something? Well, you know, I mean, my first year election, I, I, nobody thought I had a chance of winning either, but uh, I, I stay at it pretty much. Um, I'm putting together a, uh, a small group of people that can help me with it because I think it's probably bigger than me. But uh, uh, I'm, I, I have the support of the board, our board of supervisors as a whole, and I think that carries some weight. Um, and I also believe that, uh, you know, if we show them, that uh, this is the place to educate, uh, not only for our communities here, but for, for uh, East San Joaquin County and maybe Jackson um, area, then uh, maybe they'll decide to uh, come here. So what would a campus mean for families and students in Calaveras County? What would that mean to, to the people here? Right now what we have, uh, you know, if you have a graduating class of around 230 people from Calaveras High School, uh, probably around 220 of them will leave. <laughs> so, uh, and and what they do is they start off commuting. So uh, they'll go, they'll go commute for a while, and then they realize it costs too much to commute. It's too much time. So then they get an apartment down in uh, uh, Stockton or you know over in Tuolumne County somewhere. Then we lost them because uh, normally they won't come back to our county. And and uh, so not only does it save the uh, families money. But it also retained some of the youth in our uh, the smart the most uh, brightest youth in our uh, county, and that's what we need. We need that reinvestment back into the county from our, our youngest and brightest youth. Makes sense to me. Yeah. What else is uh, something that you're proud of the first year? Um, I have been working on um, uh, a uh, water district. Uh, Right now, all the water district sends their biosolids out of county. Mm -hmm. And um, so I've been working with uh, um, environmental health and also with the uh, solid waste landfill on tr finding out why. Why do we send the, the sludge or the biosolids outside of the county? They have to transport it. Um, they have to pay a uh, pretty good amount of money for it to, to deliver it. And, uh, and then that money actually goes from our special districts here, all of them, and leaves the county and is gone. So what I'd like to do is bring it in county at our solid waste facility, use it for alternative daily cover, and, um, uh, which we're, we can do, and um, uh, bring that money in and keep it in the county. So it would uh, give the, uh, the water districts and the sewer districts a break, or at least the sewer districts a break, and it would also keep that uh, money in county, and that's important. Sounds good. Okay, so I mean, obviously you have, and I'm sure you probably have about 10 more things that you're proud of. But I had 11 total. You had 11 total? <laughs> <laughs> well, that puts us to an hour, so. Um, how about this? When you look back over the last year, is there anything you think you could have done better, or are there any decisions that you think maybe weren't the right ones? You know, I've uh, second-guessed myself a couple of times, but, um, uh, really, um, I've been focused on uh, moving forward. So uh, if, if there's something that didn't quite feel right or look right, uh, it usually was right anyhow. Mm. So, um, uh, you know, the, the goal here is to, is to, uh, to work for our, our folks here in the county and, and to get our county uh, working for folks here in the county, which they do. They do a great job. Um, and I think it's getting better. Um, the other thing that I, I wanted to really concentrate on was to making sure that our meetings were accessible uh, to uh, everybody. So we, we added uh, night meetings. There's three, three night meetings a year for people to come. Uh, and I wanted our board meetings to be uh, cordial. Hmm. So we don't, you know, most of our meetings now, uh, they're, they're uh, calm. And, uh, you know, that's a good thing. You'd almost think that should be the status quo, but uh, apparently that hasn't always been the case here. Well, you know, uh, I think we got some really good people. Uh, we got a great board, and uh, you know, sometimes you, you can have uh, all stars on a, a baseball team, 
and uh, they'll lose the games. Uh, sometimes uh, it, it just takes the right mix of people to make it work right. At yesterday's meeting, um, there were a set of five top priorities that the board set. And this kind of came from a meeting with a facilitator who wanted to make sure that all the ideas floating around um, that board members had kind of were coalesced into common goals that the whole board could get behind. And with unity comes more, more authority and power and effectiveness. Um, so you guys finally boiled those down, and I think yesterday you, you voted on, on those. And the, the top one was budget. Yes. That was the, the number one. So I just want to talk about a few of these. So with budget, if you could take us through what happened with the last budget and then what we're looking at with the budget to come. Hmm. So the last budget um, balanced. And, uh, the, you know, there was uh, the reason it balanced was because there was a f there was a pile of money sitting there that uh, the previous board um, uh, was able to capitalize on from some insurance deal. So uh, overpayment on insurance, I think, is what it was. Um, when it came to us, and that's gone already, so now it's us. <laughs> and, um, and so we, uh, what we did was uh, we, it was real quick for us. You know, we got voted, uh, uh, elected in on November 16th, and then, and then our first day was uh, January 5th, and we were into it. Into uh, budget deliberation. Yeah, so, you know, all of our minds were, okay, we know that uh, safety is number one in this county. We need to make sure that our communities are safe. And so uh, we uh, elected to uh, uh, give the sheriff some support, and we did that. Uh, so that's our first year. You know, we learned quite a bit about that. Uh, the the CAO was uh, pretty clear on uh, you know that wasn't quite the right thing to do, and uh, not not necessarily that, but that we were uh, under budgeted. So uh, now, like this year, I feel that uh, the CAO has done a great job of pulling everybody together so that we can work together to balance this budget. We know a lot more about it. We know a lot more about uh, each other. And, uh, you know, the, there were a lot of uh, groups not working well together, and they are now. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, she's been working really hard on that. and. Uh, um, so I feel that we're going to have a better cooperative budget uh, session. Just, just not to, to uh, fly by last year quite so quickly, the, there was a shortfall with the regular funds, and the, one time, the money that you talked about was one-time funding, so that money doesn't come back. It's really you spend it once and it's gone, mm -hmm. and a lot of that was used, about half of that fund, to balance the budget yeah, and it's then called the teeter fund it's called the teeter fund mm -hmm. and then you and then you added new deputy positions and so uh, there's been criticism of the board for when they really didn't have the money to even balance the budget as it was not only did they use one time money to balance it but you also voted to add positions that you really couldn't afford mm -hmm. so i mean how do you justify that well the uh, you know they've used one time funds in the past as well it's, uh, it's, it may not have been as much, but they have. Um, if you look at those uh, four deputy positions that we, um, uh, that we approved, mm -hmm. you'll probably find that they have never been filled. So it'd be pretty hard to use that for an excuse because they rotate. You'll get, they'll get a deputy in and a deputy leaves. They're constantly doing that. People, people, uh, deputies come up here to get a little bit of experience. They're not, you know, they don't, they're up here for a particular reason. They want to, they want to further their career in a lot of cases. Some of them come up here because they love it up here, mm -hmm. and they like to work in these in, in these small communities. But a lot of them just rotate through, and um, I'm pretty sure that you, if you looked at, uh, I bet you those four vacancies are still there. So you don't, really don't pay for them, but they're because of the the rotating. Uh, cycle that they're on and uh, um, so we're trying to and the, and the sheriff is, is doing uh, trying and doing a really good job of trying to get a steady for a steady force so that he can rely on and and make it easier for him to to give us real numbers as well well I, I guess I understand I mean we need public safety and all that but because one-time funds were spent 
ongoing expenses continue into the next budget. So we had a budget shortfall that year. We're also going to have a budget shortfall this year. And Lori Norton, the CAO, said we're looking at a four to seven million dollar budget shortfall, which mm -hmm. is huge. Mm -hmm. Our general fund is like 30 million, 30 plus million dollars. I mean, that's a huge percentage of that. So by funding positions that are ongoing positions using one-time money, that digs a pretty deep hole in addition to, you know, we're going to come to a point where you're looking around for money, it's not there. Yeah. Um, I know you have a little more one-time funding money, but once that's gone, how do you sustain yeah. bu a budget that really is way overblown? I mean, I, I, I just I don't see the clear answer to this. Yeah, it's not a clear answer. So, you know, we have to be creative. Um, there's going to be some tough choices to make. Will people, there have been, will people uh, lose their jobs? I'm pretty sure. Okay. You know, that's, that's, we get the uh, picture, we get that picture when uh, the CAO and her staff brings it to us. Hmm. And then at that point, we can, you know, we, we decide on uh, what they recommend. Um, we didn't really know that, I don't think, as much last year. So because so, you were so new, it, everything wasn't as clear as maybe it is now? Uh, it's crystal clear now. It's crystal clear now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But, uh... Uh, you know, there's, but there's also uh, where you put your, uh, you could probably uh, have massive layoffs and never, uh, never, uh, uh, never make up that money for the budget. I mean, yeah. just think about it. You know, if you're four million or six or seven million dollars in a hole, you could probably just lay off everybody in the whole county and you still wouldn't be able to cover that. So, the, 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 you know, you, we have to find a way to generate funds in this county. And the only way to do that is through economic development. Uh, so uh, I've, I asked that when, uh, uh, last year during our budget meeting, I, I asked them, you know, everybody's saying, well, uh, show us how you're gonna save 5% or 10% on, on each individual uh, department head, what they're gonna do for their, their budget. And I was asking them, show me what you can do to increase our budget by 5%. You know, I know you can make cuts, but show us there are certain comp or certain uh, uh, groups that can do that. Land use, the land use groups can make money for the, for uh, make up money for our county. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, how can that happen? Uh, haven't got there yet. So one thing about, like you said, let's, so you have a budget that you need to meet, and one way, um, if you don't have enough money, is to cut. The other way is to generate new funds. Most fund generating schemes are long term. So it takes quite a while for that money to start coming in, even if the groundwork is laid now. So is it fair to say that really any money generating scheme of any consequence wouldn't have much of an impact on this coming budget? It's fair to say, yes. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't start these things, well, because down the road... I'll give you an example. Senders Market moved to uh, Valley Springs. Mm -hmm. right? It's a big store. They generate a lot of money. And so that's big sales, uh, you know, for, for our county, retail sales. Uh, if we had uh, four or five more of those uh, popping in somewhere, then it, it comes quick. Um, we don't get that, and there's a lot of reasons for that, and maybe that's some of the uh, things that we need to work on uh, as a uh, county and uh, to uh, see how we can make that happen a little easier for businesses that want to come in into this county. So as far as managing what we have, um, it's going to take every department and, and uh, all of us to sit down at the table and say, okay, this is what we have. This is where we need to go. And, and so uh, let's get there together. And uh, before what I noticed when we first came in, there wasn't together. There was a lot of, uh, you know, departments uh, not getting along well with each other, and and uh, you know, and then you know, there's a lot of distrust when that happens, and that creates problems. I think we're past that now, uh, in this year, and thanks to our CAO, and um, uh, and and her staff actually, and uh, and our county council has been a big part of that. Uh, so uh, I think the budget process will be more clear. And if it's more clear, then we can manage it better. We have five minutes left, and I want to give you a chance to talk about what I think is your number one thing right now, which is investing in economic development, or close to your number one thing. You've really taken the lead on this as a supervisor, and I think that that's well known throughout the county. Mm -hmm. 
and I know that there are many different aspects, but you recently got the full support of the board to be the emissary of the board for economic development. Yes. Tell me what you're up to along these lines. Well, uh, we have, uh, since uh, probably for about six months, we have had an uh, eco economic development company. It's a Calaveras County economic development company, Resurface. And uh, it, it had been there for off and on for many years. Mm -hmm. Um, usually what happens is, is, you know, somebody will come in, they'll be interested in it because they have a project. And then uh, it d goes really good for a while, and then when the project is gone, it doesn't really go that well anymore. Uh, that is, uh, some, that's pretty much what happens with a lot of things around here. There's no real consistency. So what we're trying to do is uh, build a consistent countywide nonpartisan economic development group. And so it's well on its way. They have meetings once a month. They, uh, they used to be with the chamber. They pulled themselves out. They became, uh, they reinstated their uh, uh, nonprofit status with the IRS. Uh, and uh, they're, they're, they're real. So What's like their number one goal direction right now? Right now their uh, number one goal is making Calaveras County a broadband friendly county. And we had some main lines come through that went to like the government center and the county office of education. How would that have impact other people like residences and businesses? Well, you know, there's, uh, there's, there's connection points. And so we have uh, uh, some companies, uh, private companies in the county that can uh, uh, run fiber through that and, and connect uh, either by a tower uh, and, uh, you know, from one, one tower to the next, which is still high-speed broadband, uh, or by fiber optics, like, uh, for instance, uh, Copperopolis. Uh, they're all fiber over there. Yeah. So, you know, that's huge. Uh, if we can get that here, it creates a, uh, an economic base through home-based businesses. It's better for our, uh, you know, for the schooling and our, and our kids. It's good for our seniors because then they can actually connect and um, you know, possibly make their lives better through uh, through that connection. So it's it's just a, a, a all around winning situation. If people want to get a hold of you uh, by phone or email uh, to ask you a question or meet up with you, how would they go about doing that? Well, you can go on the county website and uh, uh, go under the board of supervisors uh, um, on the county website, and you'll see my uh, email address and my phone. And uh, I, I answer my calls. Okay. Well, Cliff, uh, congratulations on your first year, and I wish you the best of luck moving into uh, what's going to be a difficult budget session ahead. Yeah, well, we're going to be okay. Okay. Thanks, Cliff. All right. Thank you. Thank you for joining me on this edition of Inside View. I'm your host, Joel Metzger, and I hope to see you here next time. Thank you.